They call him the Cracker, the Splinter, the Thin Man from St. Louis, Dick Weber, an All-American on any man's bowling team. Dick Weber, because I think uh, back in the day that bowling was a lot harder than it is now. He had one ball, or two maybe, and each house reacted differently, and then sometimes you had to play the first arrow, sometimes you had to play the fourth arrow. And when you can play the first arrow and win, and play the fourth arrow and win back in the 50s, 60s, and early 70s, that was bowling, because that's what I grew up on, and bowling was a lot harder then than it is now. Thank you, champ. Dick Weber is the winner, ladies and gentlemen. Fountain Valley, California. Not far from Los Angeles, CSPN presents live coverage of a Denny's PBA Tour special event, the 2006 Dick Weber Open, where we turn back the clock with a five-man four-match format and honor the memory of the great Dick Weber. Now all five finalists are ready to roll. The number five seed from Homestead Falls, Ohio, Chris Loeschetter. The number four seed from Erie, Pennsylvania, Mike Machuga. The number three seed from Claremont, Florida, Norm Duke. The number two seed from Claremont, Florida, Jason Couch. And our tournament leader from Jackson, New Jersey, Parker Bone the third. Hello again, everyone. Welcome, Fountain Valley, Southern California. So glad to get you on us. Dave Ryan, my partner, Randy Peterson, alongside. Sundays are indeed for bowling. And on this very special Sunday, we pay tribute, Randy, to one of the all-time great gentlemen and bowlers, Dick Weber. And we asked our five finalists yesterday in interviews about Dick. They all had one reaction, didn't they? They, they sure did. You know, Dick will always be known as the greatest ambassador uh, our sport has ever had. And, you know, I knew Dick personally, and he was just a great guy. Never met a stranger. And it didn't matter if you were Earl Anthony or a guy in his first year on the tour. He treated everyone the same. In honor of Dick Weber, we have an old-school format here for this event here in Southern California. 15 games of qualifying. We had 24 bowlers after that. Round-robin match play in three different eight-game blocks, leading us to five-man step ladder finals, just like in the day when Dick Weber was a star. Yeah, and you know, the, the, the ticket this week was winning matches because you got 30 bonus points for a win. So if you shot 269 and one, it was like shooting 299. You can make big moves. And ready, our top seed is Parker Bone the third. He awaits all challengers at the top of the ladder. For him, a very special event this week. Yeah, it really is. You know, Parker Parker's won 30 times out here. He, he won a tournament that was named after him. He won uh, the inaugural Earl Anthony Open back in 2001. But he said if he were to win today, it would be his biggest win of his career. Jason Couch is the two seed. First win this year for him in Chicago land. Number three is Norm Duke. And Norm, his fourth TV show of the year, a chance for Player of the Year honors. It's Low Shedder and Mike Machuga. Michelle goes for his first career title. Machuga won in Omaha our first match. And I won my very first title back in 1986, qualifying in the number five spot. I went through the field and won my first title in Union City, California, the AC Delco Classic. Four pin for the pride of Erie, Pennsylvania. He said to us last night, his life has changed dramatically since that first PBA Tour win in Council Bluffs, Iowa, just across the Nebraska line earlier this season. Recognized more around town. When he got back to the holiday break, a local TV station called him up and said, hey, we'd like an interview. You're a big star now. Now Mike is thinking about more wins. Maybe the Hall of Fame someday that he's on the list and has that banner as a Denny's PGA Tour champion. What a story for our young bowler from Homestead Falls, Ohio, just outside Cleveland. Originally a Floridian, Randy, like yourself, went to one of your Bowling clinics as a youngster with his wife Erin, who's getting her master's degree at Cleveland State, a little bit further <coughs> down the road for her in education. <laughs> a 
that hit. First time we've seen Chris on TV since the World Championship last year. And interesting right off the bat, Chris a little bit further right of Mike Machuga. And I, I thought it would have been the other way around. Chris played pretty much in for the most part of the tournament, especially when the lane started to break down. We'll get into that when we look at our oil pattern. Chris Douglas, collegiate bowling career at Nebraska, transferred then to Florida State where he finished up. And that leads us to our first ace hardware matchup of the day in our stepladder final. Remember, this week was all about winning matches, and Chris Lowshedder had an, a losing match play record. But because he averaged so high, in fact, he was in first place after the third round of qualifying to just to get into match play. So even though he didn't win matches, he still bowled big games and accumulated an, enough pins to get him to the TV show. See the strike percentage numbers. And that's off the mark, too. Another light hit, Swish Zone. As he leaves the 2 4 10. What's going on here, Randy? Well, again, this ball went light. In the first frame, he only left the two pin. This one's a little bit further right, and he pays for it. 2 4 10. Get the ball to the left side of the two pin, slide it over into the 10. The ball will take care of the four. Chris, the Tour Trials champion. Chicago land last summer. That's how he got his exemption. Tough spare cannot convert, leaves an open. As the 10 pin stands for Chris Loeschetter. Our fifth seed in the stepladder format and early on an opening for Mike Machuga. Clean it up. The best amongst the best with two perfect games. We watched that final round round robin match play positioning round on Friday right in front of me Robert Smith through a 300 game all 10 down for the guy they call Chews from Erie Pennsylvania so after getting that win Randy, he's kind of bolting quietly up the points list he's number 10 heading into this show today yeah and you can see that he's uh, starting to get real confident and that's what a win will do for you but you know you're talking about those 300 games well two 300 games in the same block Thursday night match play and also had a 280 45 foot strip pattern it's different than the normal PBA tour pattern as Machuga sends all 10 down into the pit perfect shot that's a good shot he looks comfortable we'll see Norm Duke later in the show he and Norm are very good friends and Duke has been the teacher Machuga has been the pupil. Norm told us, I've got to stop teaching Mike Machuga things. He's getting to be dangerous out here. Ups and downs for Lowshedder. This week in match play, that's a high shot, so he over adjusts. And he has not found the pocket yet, Randy. Yeah, he just tried to square it up a little bit. And looks like uh, Chris is trying to go a little bit straighter than, than I think he needs to. I mean, I would get into where Machuga is. Chris is very good at hooking it. In fact, he told us that some of his early struggles this season was because he was trying to hook it too much. But right now, I think he's trying to go too straight. Just his second show, folks. Keep that in mind. He told us that tour trial experience was valuable, but he never wants to go back. It was a very big challenge for him. And look out. The double wood stands. Takes care of the 10. Another open frame. Back to back in frames two and three. And the lead huge for Machuga so early in a match. At 36 pins, are the nerves getting to Chris Lowshedder? I don't, I don't think it's so much that he's nervous. I just think that he's, he's not real comfortable, comfortable with his ball reaction. I'm looking for him to, to make a ball change here any minute and, and do something different because what he's doing right now certainly isn't working. Four and four in the first round of match play. Two and six in the second. Four and four in the final round. He had a five-game losing streak in the second round of match play, so that's why he's the only bowler under 500. In match play coming into the TV show, but all those numbers are thrown out now. It's head to head with Mike Machuga, and he's found the pocket. And Dave, watch this. You can see this ball is completely different reaction. It looks like he's moved in, a little more side rotation, and a completely different ball reaction. And he's like, you know what? Maybe that's what I should have started with. Not too late. The opens early can be overcome. We'll see. Fourth frame, Turkey chance here. Machuga. Blitzes the rack again. 
Well, those open frames came early for low shutter, but you know it's only it's only going to help if Machuga gives him a, a chance. And right now, Mike's got his foot firmly on low shutter's throat and looking to go 56 up with a four bagger. Or, I'm sorry, 46 up with a four bagger. Quite possibly, major name. Up and coming star on the PBA Tour, Mike Machuga. He's got that first win. It took him 79 events to get his first title. Wheel, a lot. That's a break. A little bit of a light hit, but still not too much damage, just the two pin. Yeah, that was kind of the key this week. You know, when he did go light, he only left the two pin. And Mike knows that he's fortunate here. He could have left the 210 or 2810 easily, just leaving him a simple single pin spare. November 13th of 05, a day you won't forget. Bill O'Neill in the finals in Omaha after knocking off Dave Traber in the semis. The O'Neill match 256-245. He's going to lose two shows, three years in a row now. And with a win today, Mike Machuga would already realize a career high in earnings. 30000 and a one-year tour exemption goes to the winner today. Step ladder finals. We're going old school to pay tribute to Dick Weber. Way light again. Mm. Well, you, you know, it looked like Chris took an awful long time getting up on the right lane to throw this shot, and to me, he's just confused. On this right lane, especially, this ball here never grabs down the lane. This is a head pin. Best finish before this week, 15th. That was in Denver. And Chris told us last night. He takes care of the high number of pins there for his mark. Got a call from Justin Kostick, Doug Kaberski, who was a former roommate of his at Nebraska. And both teammates with the Huskers, they called and said, you got to shape up a little bit. Don't feel so sorry for yourself. You're a great bowler. You've got the potential. Just got to focus, put all the tools together. And Chris said that phone call really helped. Yeah, and that plus uh, the break during the holidays probably helped him clear his mind a little bit and go back to doing what Chris Lowshedder does best. Saw his wife Aaron earlier. She's a bowler herself. Fortunately, he just can't get the range going. There's a washout and a light hit. And the 1 6 10 up. This looked like a pretty good shot off his hand, except for the fact that it was a little bit wide. But again, ball doesn't hook up and misses the head pin. I think it's just a bad ball choice. Not an easy mark and look out. Leaves the head pin, another open frame. That's his third in what has been a disastrous match for Chris Lowshedder. He's down 59 pins to Mike Machugo, who can put this thing in cruise control. And try to wrap it up and move his way up the ladder. We've got more coming up. The Dick Weber Open on ESPN is brought to you by Denny's. We are cooking now. By Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. This year, let the tax experts at Jackson Hewitt help you get the biggest refund you deserve. By BowlersParadise.com, the official online retailer of the Professional Bowlers Association. Log on today and win a free ball. And by Pepsi, the official soft drink of bowling. Midway through match one here at the Dick Weber Open, Fountain Valley, California, near Los Angeles. There is Pete, Dick's son, and PBA Hall of Famer in his own right. 32 titles in his great career, including in Hammond, Indiana this year. Very emotional day, certainly, for Pete. And we are very glad to see him out honoring his father today. Leading us right into the oil pattern, old school in tribute to Dick Weber. We have strip patterns today at 45 feet. Yeah, it's old school in terms of strips, but I don't think I've ever bowled on a 45-foot strip pattern. But we did this week. But what was disturbing about this week was the light amount of volume in the front part of the lane. And what that did was it made your ball hook early. The righty started in between first and second arrow. You had strips, so there was a little oil here. Then it started to get dry. Then there was a little oil here. So when you made a move, it had to be a big move. The lefties with less traffic on their side of the lane, they were able to stay in the same part of the lane for a little longer period of time. Jason Couch told us, to the best of his memory, last time the PBA used strip oil powder, 1995 in Maryland. That was his most recent recollection. 
Yeah, and you know, there was a big deal this week about lefty versus righty. Did the left have an advantage? Did the right, you know, was it unfair? And, you know, I think Jason said it best. That there were six lefties in the match play. Ooh, ring 10 by Mike Machuga. But getting back to what I was saying, Jason Couch said if the lanes were so easy on the left, we would have had five lefties on the telecast today. And I think that's a good point. So we have a balanced field. We have two outstanding <laughs> left-handers still to come on our show today. Jason Couch, Parker Bone III, the top seed. Norm Duke up here as well. He is next. Could be against Mike Machuga, his protege. And as Machuga continues his long streak now about an open frame, he came in with 33 straight, six more now. This guy's been hot all week, Randy. He had a 23-bagger in the first round of match play, 23 straight strikes, including a 300 game. Yeah, he was making them look pretty easy in match play. Seventh frame, 58 pin lead. Play that game. Right. See that ball jerk right there in the middle part of the lane? That's exactly what I was talking about. Because of the light volume. A couple more. Especially on TV day with all the all the bodies sitting around the stadium here, the, the lanes, the lights. This oil is going to go quick. And what's disturbing about this is you see how deep Mike Machuga is already, and it's only game one. When these guys were warming up prior to this match, they were playing straight up second arrow. How much further can he go is the question. Takes care of the mark. Seventh frame. Now what we saw from Mike the other night in the round robin match play was extreme loft. He said he was going as far as 15 feet down lane. Yeah, he would move way left and, and the only way to get the ball down the lane was to loft it and clear that front part, that uh, dry head area. He would loft over that and get, get his ball easier to the break point. Back to low shitter now. Our fifth seed. Gets a break. Late hit. And gets a strike. Although he was down 57 pins heading into that shot. And although this kid's struggling, as you see his wife, Erin, you know, Chris Lowshedder is a great bowler, and, and he proved it at tour trials. When he led the competition there, five grueling days, nine games a day. And you see what he did this week in wins and losses. I mean, he was solid all week long. He wasn't third going into position round when he lost to Mike Machuga, and then Norm Duke leapfrog both of them with a big 260 closer. Gets a break on a couple of pins there, but he's just not in the right zone. Another light hit for him and leaves the 10 pin. He says that tour trial week, Randy, was the hardest of his life. And there are no circumstances you want to go back. Looking for his first ever title. Does not look like it'll happen today. He made the finals of the World Championship last year. Lost to the eventual champ, Patrick Allen. Takes care of the 10 pin. He told us last night, well, it was a good experience, but that event in April was a long time ago. I've kind of moved on from the World Championship final appearance. And that's part of the progression of a young player. You've got to forget the highs and the lows and think about today. Yeah, and I, I agree. I mean, I think uh, because of his experience at the World uh, Championships and at Tour Trials, he had greater expectations coming out here, being an exempt player, and it just hasn't worked out that well for him. You see Michael Chuga already in front of the ball return on the right lane. And watch his moves, watch the progress, and I'm telling you folks, if he goes to that loft technique to get the ball down lane to beat the oil, it almost looks like a skills challenge trick shot it's so far down. That ball's already at the 26th board at the arrows. I mean, I would say realistically, Mike Machuga's got four or five more boards that he can play with on that side of the lane before he runs out of room. Eighth career TV appearance for Mike Machuga, who, like Chris Lowshedder, started his collegiate bowling career at Nebraska. He was a Husker for a couple of years, between 94 and 96. Foundation frame. All 10 down for Machuga, who ends this one with a huge, resounding victory over Chris Lowshedder in the first match. And now he's got to take on one of his best friends, his idols, 
his mentors in Norm Duke. They are very close, have never met on TV until today. That is going to be interesting. Loshetter will finish up here with a nine pin. It's been a great week for Chris. Not overly pleased, as we mentioned, with his first half. But improvements on the way for Chris Loshetter. Also told us that he did get to meet Dick Weber after he beat Pete in Indianapolis in a PBA event. He looked in the stands, saw Dick there watching, and realized, well, Dick Weber's rooting against me. I, I'm not sure I can make up to this. I'm not sure I can stand up. But he did, and Dick, of course, in his incredible way, absolute gentleman of the game, congratulated Chris Loeschitter, despite the fact he'd beaten his son Pete in a match, and said, good luck to you down the road. Yeah, he wasn't nervous until he saw Dick standing back there. Remember the Junior Olympic team in 2001. Definitely an up-and-comer. Chris Loeschetter will learn from this experience today. We're going to fast-track through since Machuga has wrapped it up as the four seed, going for his second career title. He's already exempt for next year. He's going to take on Norm Duke, who leads the PBA Tour in points. He is number one ranked in the world right now and has seven top ten finishes. This is going to be a great match coming up. We asked Machuga if he wins again, will we see the Machuga flop? He said, stay tuned. <laughs> so if you're thinking about touching that remote control, don't do it. Machuga is one of the game's great showmen. Ugly ball reaction, unfortunately, for Chris Rochetter today. He'll be back. In the bowling world, they call this getting run over. Yeah. As Norm Duke awaits. He will be next to take on Mike Machuga. They've met many times, Norm told us, in match play, but never on television. And Norm knows his good buddy, his pupil, will be a very interesting matchup. The great Norm Duke awaits Mike Machuga. It's all coming up as we pay tribute to the late, great Dick Weber. Hi, I'm Norm Duke from Claremont, Florida. All right, what do you want to hear? Yes! Hey, yes! <laughs> Stay tuned. One hundred fifty-nine PBA event in the Golden State here in California, the fifteenth in the Orange County area. Last year, Mike Matruga made the finals, lost to Brian Voss in the Orange County. Classic. Now it's Norm Duke and Mike Machuga. Step ladder, match two. Machuga just moments ago defeating Chris Loeschetter. Handling 236 to 154. The winner will take on Jason Couch in the next match. Winner of that one, all the way up the ladder. The top seed, Parker Bone the third, a Hall of Famer awaits. Great day, great bowlers. Paying tribute to Dick Weber. On the Denny's PBA Tour, match two underway. Help on number nine. Almost toppled. You know, and I think there's a big advantage in this match for Mike Machuga simply because of the fact that he's got one game under his belt. He's got momentum on his side. He knows how the lanes are playing. Norm's coming in fresh with only four practice balls to start this match. So that's why the step ladder is so different. In the regular format, semifinal winners got to wait for that final match. They got to wait a match at our skills challenge, part of our broadcast. There's some time now. If you win, you're right back on the lane. Exactly. 22 titles. The pride of Claremont, one of the two from Claremont, Florida, on our show today, along with Jason Couch. Good start for him, and a guy named Randy Peterson may also live in Claremont, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they beat me handily, though. The matchup of the student and the pupil, and as you said, Dave Ryan, Norm said that he wasn't going to help Mike Machuga anymore. He said he's getting too good. And you could see the game plan of Norm Duke, something that he did this week, was go real, real straight from that first strip. 
Anything outside second arrow this week on the right was out of bounds. Ah. He's a seven pin. Norman. Norman is fourth show of the year. That is tied for first in the Denny's PBA Tour list with Wes Malott. And in order to get the ball to go this straight, number one, you need to use a ball that's fairly aggressive, but you have to back your hand out, cut, cut your rev rate down, reduce your hook, and just kind of feather the ball right at the one three. It's all about touch. Norm averaged over 250 in the second round of qualifying, doing just that. Seven pin for him. We saw all the numbers of the great Norm Duke who told us last night. Fourth show of the year. Am I thinking about player of the year? I'm going to win player of the year. He's got to win some tournaments, though, starting today. To get himself there, he's surpassed Mike Scroggins as the points leader. He was fourth on that list coming into this week. Now he is number one. Crossing over, high shot there from Machuga. Great group. Lanes break down, these strip oil patterns, that's when changes all come into play. Yeah, this ball never makes it to the right. And, you know, Mike struck out in the 10th frame on that lane, and Norm came out and practiced through a couple shots, and all of a sudden, lanes break down, Mike will make a move on that lane. Second time this year, step ladder final for Norm. Remember, he was the top seed at the Masters in Milwaukee, but lost to Mike Scroggins. What he called one of the most disappointing setbacks of his career. Look out. A chop and an open. It is early. Second frame. Yeah, Mike decides to throw a straight ball at this spare. And it's a tough spare this week because if you get it too far to the right, like Lowshitter did in, in the first match, it misses everything right. So Mike decides to go with a straight ball. And he chops the 3-9. Off of the six, his first open in 43 frames. Yeah, mentioned that stat for you in the first match with Lowshitter. Ball change. Ball change, no doubt about it. You can see that clearly. And a nice adjustment for Machuga. And that was a big concern with him last night in our interview with him about the oil breaking down. ESPN's coverage of the PBA Tour rules on. Phoenix Classic, the greatest fours in the world, work the lanes at AMF Christown Lanes in the Phoenix area, piece of the $232,000 prize fund. The PBA Tour and ESPN Sunday at 1 Eastern. Mika Quivenemi won there last year. Mika made the finals in Medford last week, lost to Brian Himmler. As Duke Tate has the range, looking strong. He uses the full approach. He's got his heels off the back of that approach there. Generates momentum to the foul line. And Norm has made a tremendous living doing this right here. See Norm working the shoes there as we see Dave Osborne, Gary Foreman, Vice President of Fountain Bowl. Thanks again, gentlemen, hosting a wonderful event. So special this year, paying tribute to Dick Weber. Ozzie and his crew do a great job here, year in and year out. Pleasure to come back to Fountain Bowl. Wow. 10 pin for Norm. Why the different shoes? We saw him looking at his traction a moment ago. Uh, it's, it's just Looks the like slide shoe. High. I mean, he, you know, he goes to a different slide shoe. He always wears the same right shoe. And some weeks the approaches are a little tackier, yeah. and some weeks they're not. And so he'll get more traction or less traction with his left shoe. Okay. He liked that one off his hand. Right, right off the end of the approach. Takes care of the 10 pin. Made a tremendous year for him. We mentioned seven top 10 finishes. Tommy Jones is second in that category with six. West Milan has five. Several others, including Mike Bishop, Jason Couch, Parker Bone III, all on the show today. Have four top 10s. First half plus of our season. Just won't push that just did look good out of his hand. You saw at the tail end of the oil pattern how it didn't grab and goes high right through the nose. Well, it grabs early, see, and then, it, and then the ball has no chance to get right of the head pin. So the friction's created too early, which doesn't allow the ball to go far enough right. And then once it gets to the back part of the lane, you know, it's, you know which direction it's going to go in. And I think it's time for Mike Machu to make a ball change on that right lane as well. Does cover the two pin spare. Why the big difference between game one and two with his ball reaction? It, it's all about the light volume of oil in the, in the first 15 feet of the lane. And when that starts to go, 
and your ball starts to read the lane too soon, it's very difficult to get your ball to the same break point each and every time. Players in their layout bring several balls. It is a guessing game. Yeah, but, but it's an educated guess. Very much educated guess amongst some experts here. The world's best players. But really, it comes down to anticipation, strategy, and knowing how your ball will react as the lanes break down. Yeah, it's almost, you know, it's, it's a chess match. It's trying to think, you know, two, three, four moves ahead of your opponent. And, and like you said, anticipating that move and making that move before something disastrous happens. I'm right at it. Hey. Well, you know, Norm is uh, getting to the 1-3 pocket and getting flush to the 1-3 pocket, but the ball's not doing the right thing down the lane, and that's why he's leaving ring and tens. You know, this was his bread and butter all week, and all week long that struck. And now he's leaving ring and tens. That's a real bad sign. Talk about an incredible run. 16 straight. It's been really good for a really long time. You know what, and the, and the thing about it, you know, you look at the careers like a Brian Voss, a Walter Ray Williams Jr., and Norm Duke, they've gone through, you know, different eras. You know, we, we used uh, rubber and plastic for a while, then it went to urethane, then it went to reactive resin. Now it's the, you know, the new bowling balls we're using today, which are so aggressive and so strong. And these guys have found a way to bowl great year in and year out, no matter what oil pattern, no matter what equipment we have to use. Here you go. He likes that ball reaction quite a bit. 13 can lead. We come back, a special look at Dick Weber through his son's Pete eyes. The bowling world shocked last year by Dick's passing. To the beautiful bowling establishment, the Thunderbird Lanes. And of course, uh, if you were watching, Dick Weber was the winner. The great career of Dick Weber dates back to the origins of the PBA. He was a charter member who won 26 titles. He was the player of the year in 1965, when at this tournament, the Thunderbird Open in Wichita, Kansas, he once again came up with a clutch shot when he needed it most. And Weber now has a 5-7 split. Earlier, a 3-7, now a 5-7. He converts it. It's over now. Dick Weber. Tell me, uh, just how do you go about consistently converting 5-7 splits? Well, I tell you, Chris, uh, uh, the ball was bad in the first place, and I just made a good guess and made the 5-7. Made the but the key shots were, I think, were in the second, third frame. When I let those, uh, the ball go, I knew it had to be in the nose, but it just backed up just right and ended up in the pocket. So <laughs> that's all I can say. Champ? Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you very much. Very good. Match two, step ladder finals here in Fountain Valley. The winner take on Jason Couch. 13 pin lead for Norm Duke. Pete Weber certainly very emotional. And last tribute to his dad, Dick. Great to see Pete here taking it all in. Gives us a chance. Denny's PBA Tour on the road. Motel 6 Phoenix Classic is coming your way. Last season, Mika Crow and Emmy won the title nearby Mesa in 2000 AFM AMF. Chris Down Lanes played host to the qualifying and match play portion to the U.S. Open. Be sure to log on to PBA.com for all the Pro-Am sites, tickets there, and then the Jackson Hewitt Tax Service Classic, January 25th to the 29th, Trustville, Alabama, near Birmingham. Don't forget, Jackson Hewitt Tax Service recently announcing a $1 million bonus to any player winning the remaining three majors this season. The U.S. Open Denny's World Championship, the Dexter Tournament of Champions as well. A lot of incentive, thanks to our friends at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Mike Machuga's made that ball change on the right lane, Dave. Ball 10 down. Yeah, now it's a three pin match. Mike Machuga looks like he's getting locked in again, makes the ball change so he can stay in the same zone. And you know, that's what Jason Couch told us he did all week last night.
Jason said he stayed in the same zone and just went to, started with aggressive equipment and just started to go from there. When the lane started to burn up, just went weaker and weaker and weaker with equipment, with surface, and with his hand. Look out, it's a 7-10. Wow. He made a really good shot there. It was wide, but he got enough hand in it to get this ball to come back. Something and about then that lane. Just an awful, awful break. Last year here, too. <laughs> Which side? 1991. Just stay rook in Tucson, Arizona. Last time it's been done. Like Only like three times on TV. Come on, just like me. Get out of there. How about number four? Nope. Seven up for Chugs. He said he has watched a tape of his win in Omaha about 250 times. When he got back, his dad, Richard, some other family friends are waiting for him in the apartment back in Erie to celebrate. He had watched the tape more than Mike had already. All 10 down for Norm Duke, trying to take advantage well, the open frame in the seventh from Machuga. As we mentioned, the Denny's march to the world championship. Norm Duke, top ranked right now in the world, surpassing Mike Scroggins. Duke entered the week number four in the rankings. West Vallant had the four shows, but those were early in the year. The win in Denver, Tommy Jones had the back-back wins to start our season. And Couch and Parker coming up. That's a pretty strong top eight list. for the turkey here, eighth frame. Now a chance to really bury Mike Machuga. He'll go up 37 pins. Wow. That was do 8 off his hand. That ball had no chance of hooking up. I mean, you got to touch the holes a little bit to get the ball to back end just a hair, and this one looks like it was just a wet bar of soap right out of his hand. Leaves the bucket. <laughs> Takes care of it for his mark. Low pin count on that first ball will affect things, certainly, and Machuga will try to take advantage. Real easy to chop that, but Norm is an excellent spare shooter. Right now, the situation is simple. Mike Machuga can strike out for 212. Norm Duke is going at a 205 pace. The door opens up again. Can Machuga take advantage? All 10 down. Made that ball change. After our last commercial break, adjustments are critical. Mike likes the right lane better than the left lane, according to those numbers. I think he's pretty good on that left lane. The bad break with the pocket 7-10 the last time he was up. On this lane. Jason Couch awaits, has the two seed. Ten pin. Yeah, and right now, the only thing that's keeping Mike Machuga from being in this match is bad breaks. This is a great shot. And at least this time he gets the seven pin out, Dave. Bringing ten. Look at the ball. Take out everything but that ten. Six goes right around mm. it. That's why we call it the ringing ten. It's big. Ninth foundation frame does take care of the mark. However, just a spare in the ninth. For the pupil against the teacher. These two, as we mentioned, very close friends. They practice a lot together. They golf together. They hang out all the time away from the lanes. Same deal. What's happened with Norm here? Just, uh, you know, he's got to be real careful out there because if he touches too much or if he tries to hit the ball at the bottom of the swing too much, it's going to hook early and go high. So anyway, his release point is real spot. critical. But right now, all Norm Duke has to do is stay clean and he'll advance. Norm 
Arm will work on the grip now. Uh, it looks like the two pins okay, but the other, I mean, there's just distance between both. He wants a reset of the pins on that spare. What? It didn't look <laughs> right when they came back down. Yeah, and, and that happens sometimes. The machine will pick pins up and set them down You're off right. spot. Now, That's as long as another pin doesn't get in between those pins and moves them around, Norm can ask for them to be put back on spot. And what's Norm working on with his equipment, Randy? <laughs> working on that tape. He's always fiddling with that tape. He's got a, a cork insert that goes in his thumb, and he's always fiddling with that thing. Norm's, Norm's fidgety, <laughs> and he's... Uh, that's his, that's his thing, man. He's always trying to move that cork around and tape and all kinds of stuff going on there with Norm and his, and his grip and equipment. He likes the ice opponent sometimes. I, I didn't say that. Gamesmanship sometimes. Give you some more time to think about a big shot like this. He does cover nicely to stay clean with a mark. Yeah, he barely covered it. And again, now all he needs is to stay clean. And he'll be in the 200s or high 190s, depending on count. But he almost chops this and lets Mike Machiga right back in the match. There's no marks here. Whoa. Strike. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was close. Strike. He has really lost the ball reaction on that lane. Just needs the mark now. All Mike Machuga can do is watch. Better ball, 10 down, and a winner. This guy's tough as nails. You want to know why? He used to bowl pot mm. games when he was 15, 16 years old with no money in his pocket. I mean, that's where you, that's the, the school of hard knocks. That's where you grow up real quick, because if you lose, you don't have anything to pay the guy that just beat you with. That's why Norm is so tough in match play and so good on television. There you go. Needed one gets 10 instead, and he will advance to take on Jason Couch in our stepladder final. We'll fast track through the rest of this. Mike Machuga, some mistakes early. Second frame open. Trouble in the seventh as well. Opens the door enough for Norm Duke. But if I'm Norm, I'm a bit worried about the ball reaction on a couple of those clutch shots he needed. Yeah, if I'm Norm Duke, it's, I'm thinking it's going to take a lot more than 212 to beat Jason Couch. Remember the last time Duke faced Jason Couch was in Chicago. Jason Couch beat Norm and went on to win the title. The good friends shake hands. One advances, one is done for the day. It's Norm Duke, and he'll take on Jason Couch. It's a great matchup. Don't go away. Jason Couch, Claremont, Florida. Oh, really? What am I doing? Second seed. Don't see anybody but Parker Bone in my way. Weber Open on ESPN is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. By Pepsi, the official soft drink of bowling. And by Motel 6, the official lodging partner of the PBA. For the lowest price of any national chain, go to Motel6.com. We are getting set for match number three, Dick Weber Open live coverage here on ESPN of the Denny's PBA Tour. We find Randy Peterson, our entire crew. Well, Randy's from Claremont, Norm's from Claremont, Jason is from Claremont. I'm the odd man out from Syracuse here. Time to move, pal. <laughs> These guys live just a couple of miles apart near Orlando. In fact, their kids go to the same school. Jason's wife, Kim, is here. Norm's son, Brandon, and Jason's daughters, Courtney and Haley, go to Cypress Ridge Elementary together. Who has bragging rights on Monday? We'll find out. Look, out oh, is that ball wow. off the mark? What happened? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he totally lost this off his hand, got it right, or got it left, rather. And you can see all the oil outside on both sides of the lane. Jason 
Some footing problems, but that was just a big wide left shot. Whoa. And left himself with a pretty tough spare. One five ten. Get his ball to hook into it. Drive the one into the ten. The ball cover the five. Not the shot you would anticipate off of Couch's first ball of the day. Look at that. Sprayed around the five and the ten and open. Easily one of my check shots. For Jason Couch, or maybe the nerves will be passed now. So on any, on any other lane condition, Dave, because of the amount of hook that Jason has, his ball would have gone into that five, and he probably would have covered that, that spare. But because the lanes are so slick down the lane, tough to get the ball reaction, the hook in the back part of the lane. Ron Duke apparently has overcome his issues in the last game against Mike Machuga. Leading us to the Ace Hardware matchup, match three, step ladder final today, Randy. See, both guys are great in match play, and again, this is the, the old school format, round robin match play, all about winning matches, but this is all about bragging rights for Claremont, Florida. Of course, I can't really be a part of that, Dave, and you know, my kids don't go to, to that school. Apparently, you have to bowl on television to be allowed in. Light hit again there for Norm Duke, who as quickly as he Tape again. found the look on the prior lane. Struggles a bit here. Yeah, this is a second consecutive shot on this lane that he's gone real light. Doesn't look good on that lane for Norm Duke. Two, four, five, seven. An unusual leave to be sure. Head to PBA.com for all the latest news, stats, player features during the tour's second half. In addition, the online store at PBA.com, the best place to buy all the latest PBA merchandise, everything from fleeces and hoodies to hats and T-shirts. Check it all out today at PBA.com. Lane level look, Norm Duke finishes nicely. Couple of unusual spares we've seen back to back. Well, it's, you know, that's like the bucket, it, except uh, the eight pin is not there and you, you replace it with the seven pin, two, four, five, seven. Um, not terribly unusual, but most of the time you're just leaving the two, four, five or the two, four, five, eight, which would be the bucket for a right hander. Now let's see as Norm goes back to the thumb hole. Man, Captain, equipment. F Captain Fidget. Always working. <laughs> How does Couch react to that first disaster? That's a big break. And that's exactly what you expected. This one was going to be right because of the first shot that he threw where he whipped the hip in on the left lane. Beautiful break here. Nothing wrong with getting a break or two. As the bird dog comes over and takes out the 4 7, Jason gives it the thumbs up. Talked to us last night about having to throw the ball straighter about adjustments he has to make. So many bowlers have made changes to become more versatile. Well, now it's the strip oil pattern. Different changes in mind. Wow. But that it, was a ring set. That, give that and take, folks. Too. Give and take. And you, you know what? I, I think you, you really got to give a lot of credit to Jason Couch because, you know, he told us as you take a look at the slash shot he threw, where he buries it and leaves a ring in seven. You know, he's, he's constantly evolving like everyone else. And contrary to popular belief, Yes, the lefties do make adjustments. They do make changes. But you know, you're seeing Jason Couch as he shoots the seven pin here. Look out. Wow. You know, he, he's gone through the changes. And you know, he told, he, he told us last night that every year he comes out here throwing it straighter and straighter and straighter. Now, he qualified second for this event, um, playing the lanes exactly the opposite of what he likes to do. He likes to hook it and go around it. And he went real straight all week. Third frame, Norm Duke. Ten pin. Boy. A lot of manipulation going on right now, Boy. trying to get the ball to face the pocket on both sides of the lane. Players are using all their tools and all their tricks to try to get the ball to face up and strike when it does hit the pocket. Single pin numbers. Leads us to a discussion point, Randy, about ball weight. Now, for a while, the trend seemed to be 15 pounds, but Norman's mother is going back to the max 16. Well, Norman, Machuga, they've all yes. they've used 16 forever. Mm -hmm. the Brian Voss, 16 pounder. Um, Chris Barnes, another guy that's used 16 pounds forever. 
Jason Couch uses 15. Now, you know, Jason, pa Jason Couch is a power player. He's got a high rev rate, a lot of power. He doesn't need 16 pounds. Norm Duke needs it because of the way he's playing the lanes today. He does that a lot. You need that extra pound just to get that 810 out. Nice. Seven pin there, had an 11 pin lead before that shot. Other finishers, bottom of your screen, including last year's player of the year, Patrick Allen, Chris Barnes. Give and take. Returning from his take back injury. 24 bowler, round robin match play. Last game Friday night here was a thrilling moment with all the bowlers out there. Position round. Robert Smith bowled 300 in he position did. round. Joey C right there, 24th. Joe made the finals, lost to Jason Couch, of course, in Chicago this season. I guarantee you, for those of you watching at home, the player's carry wasn't anything like this during the week. Last time these players met Randy, on, November 27th, Norm Duke. Losing there to couch, 235, 232. Semifinals. PJ Golf coming away the Sony Open tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 4 here on the West Coast. Dave Toms. Wow, 61 yesterday. And along with Chad Campbell. Running away with that event. They are tied at 14 under, heading into the final round. With a strip pattern, you can see just how ugly the lanes can turn. I talked to Walter Ray Williams Jr. yesterday. He looked at the graph on the uh, on the wall in the locker room. He says he's never bowled on a pattern like this in his 25-year career. Three pin KO there by Jason Couch. High game this week came against Norm Duke in match play. I told you a moment ago about the last head-to-head -head on TV, won by Couch in a slugfest. 235, 232 in Chicago. Come on, come nice on. So that win really bolstering his confidence. Phil's been a good season for him. Shots like that will continue the trend. He went to a stronger, more aggressive bowling ball day, playing the same zone. Good ball change. You see that ball really grabbed the lane and looked really hard into the pocket. But again, for a power player, that's dangerous. You touch a little bit too much of the finger holes, that ball overhooks, goes right through the nose. Light hit. And a break just to have the two pin for Norm Duke. Could have been worse. And I like the line that Norm's playing, but I think it's the wrong ball because this ball doesn't back end at all. Watch this. Normally you see change of direction down the lane. That ball has none. He needs a ball with a little bit. He's just not reacting at the tail end of this 45 foot strip old school oil pattern. We have for the Dick Weber Open here in Fountain Valley, California. Paying tribute to the late great Dick Weber who passed on about a year ago. As Norm goes back to the equipment. Yeah, he's going to make some hole adjustments. He's going to make a ball change here, I think. I think he's going to throw the red ball that will back in a little bit harder than the green ball he was throwing just because of the dynamics of the inside of the bowling ball. A little cleaner through the front part of the lane, which is going to allow it to hook a little bit more in the back part of the lane. Kind of do it. You will see several on that lane of very flat shots just not getting into the pocket. Now, will his mind allow him to pull the shot off, believing that this is the right adjustment? Oh, he went to the big hook. Big hook, big change, and all 10 down for Norm Duke. Wow, what a big adjustment with a new ball. And he likes the reaction, certainly. We saw at the Japan Cup and at the Masters, he was a top seed, did very well, but lost those two to Tommy Jones and to Mike Scroggins. More coming up. Welcome back to our Denny's PBA Tour special presentation of the Dick Weber Open. And there is young Pete Weber being instructed by his late great father. And paid tribute to the great ambassador of the game, Dick Weber. When Dick passed away last year, the bowling world completely taken by surprise. His son Pete, a PBA star himself, affected the most adversely. Now at time, Pete has been able to deal with the grief and return to being one of the game's best. 
And now Dick Weber, who has five strikes and six frames. It was a pretty big loss for me and the family and for everybody for that fact. Um, but really, uh, everybody's gotten on with their lives. Uh, it's not that we've forgotten Dad. Uh, we still talk about him. But as far as, as far as that, I just know he's up there watching me now and that he's going to try and help me through the bad times that I'm going to have on the lanes. And just hopefully that uh, I prove to myself that I'm still able to bowl and I still can win and I can still be the flamboyant one. The intensity's still there, and I think it's more going to be more there this year because of last year of what happened and me missing both majors back to back. I still have goals that I want to complete before I end my bowling career, which hopefully I'm 75, I'm still going strong like Dad was. Um, so it just, uh, but my goals, yes, I still want to win the Masters, and I still want to be Player of the Year. Unforgettable moment in Hammond, Indiana this year when Pete won his 32nd career title. And the trophy this year, named after the great Dick Weber. You know, Dave, and without question, I think Pete lived in the shadow of his father's career for many years. I feel though that when he won his 27th title, remember Dick had 26, a new identity was born. He was no longer thought of as Dick's son. He was PDW, a Hall of Famer in his own right. Bless us more. Motions running high for Pete again. Back to a very exciting match. Ten pin advantage. Norm Duke can couch, catch, fire. Yes. All ten game. down. Blitz is the rack. Jason's become a complete player out here. Taking his hand out, using an aggressive ball, letting the ball do all the work instead of him overpowering it. Yes! We are all tied up. Now it's a game indeed, Jason. After that difficult start, first frame. It was an open. Now it's for a turkey, seventh frame. All square. On, yeah. oh. Yes! Adjustments, ball change, strategy, all paying off for the great Jason Couch. And both players are going through it. Norm Duke made the ball change. The sixth frame on the left lane, Jason Couch makes the ball change, and the fifth frame throws a three bagger. All about managing your skills. So he's hooking again, and he's striking again. Remember, we were talking about the lack of back end when Norm was going real straight. And you could see right here, the ball just never picks up enough. He leaves two, four, five, seven. Now look, a 15 board left move, his hand going around the side of it, getting, getting a handful at the bottom of the swing. You can see a completely different reaction. Lane comparison. Left and right for Norm Duke. That takes a lot of confidence. That's a major adjustment to make in match. That comes high, though. Too much hook to it. Right there in the head. Oh, my gosh. 3 6 10. It's Michael right there, Norm. Sure, Norm just said he said that's Michael right there, Norm, meaning that's where Machuga was playing, and he burned up a spot right there. Norm said that ball hooked right there in the heads, and sure enough, that's one of the reasons why Norm was staying to the right and going much straighter to avoid that spot. question is, now what does he do? There's two great PBA stars that are just a few miles from one another in the Orlando area. Play golf with each other throughout the offseason. One good shot. Doors open for Couch. Does he have a four-bagger in him? You bet. Big, big shot coming up here in the ninth frame for Jason Couch. As you see him just flush, high flush, the last four shots in a row. 
This will give him a five bag with a strike here in the ninth. Splinters everywhere. Mashing the rack. Six, eight. Looks like uh, Jason Couch, by virtue of this terrible break right here, is going to let Norm back in the match. He could have struck there in the ninth and then catch a hit in the tenth and has shut out Norm Duke. Right now, if Jason fails to convert the 6-8, Norm's going to be right back in it. Jason's going to get it over here, slide that six pin right into the eight. Saw the split number a moment ago. It's been tough on Couch. Misses the eight, an open frame in the ninth. Could prove disastrous. Yeah, and right now, he gets close to it, but he needed to get a little bit, little bit further right, obviously. And right now, Norm Duke with a strike in the ninth, 10th, and 11th will win this match and go on to face Parker Bone the third for the title. We do also have a possibility of a tie. All 10 down. Right back to the straight ball, Dave. I think that's the right move, too. I, you know, the other the hook ball just looks too, too iffy. Norm Duke, what he needs to do is when that ball's not getting up to the pocket, move a little bit right, keep your target the same. Firm your speed up and jam it right into the one three. Now, if Norm Duke strikes first ball in the 10th frame and goes nine spare, we have a possibility of a tie. Jason can strike out and also shoot 213. Two strikes to shut out Jason Couch. Couch can't even watch. Right at him. Huge, 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 huge. He made a ball change, got a double with it. One ball goes high, says, you know what? I don't like it, goes back to what he was doing. Not too much, not too much hooping it up there because he knows he needs one more to shut out Jason Couch. Again, management, managing your tools, managing your mental game. Pin. Possibility of a tie now. Norm Duke makes this. Couch will need all three in the tenth to tie. Talk about pressure coming up for Jason Couch. This needed just a pinch more oomph to bump that ten out. Pretty good shot there. Norm knows it. It's just a little bit more in the back part of the lane. He to kick that ten out. If you're thinking roll off, Norm Duke is six and zero in his career. I saw him a couple years ago, Long Island on TV against your former roommate Dave Traber, win a roll off and win that tournament. Jason Couch is five and two in roll offs in his career. Yeah, I threw Traber out after he lost to Norm, so that's why he's the former roommate. I see. That's the reason. Yeah, because if he would have won, he was going to buy dinner. One at a time. One at a time. Up for uh, the 6 8 that he left in the ninth frame. Good clean living. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he got that break, huh, Jace? Almost had a 7 10 there. <sighs> Make your move, commit.
one more. And we have got a roll off. You heard him say it, make your move and commit. He did, he threw it great. When Jason Couch's ball hits there, not a whole, there's not gonna be a whole lot left standing. Commit. seat has the choice of lane and order. Each player one shot. Higher pinfall wins to take on Parker Bone the third, our top seed. And our tournament director, Kirk Von Kruger, will explain more. Ladies and gentlemen, by PBA rule, all tie games must be broken by a one ball sudden death roll off. Jason Couch is the higher qualifier. He will have start of choice, excuse me, he will have start of Order and starting lane. I'll start lane 48. Jason is elected to start on lane 48. If they both continue to tie, they will alternate lanes in the same order until the tie is broken. Thank you, Kirk. So here we go, folks. A roll off. And as we mentioned, Duke is perfect in his career. At 6 0, oh, Jason Couch 5 and 2. Good chat. Okay. Oh. Wow. Late hit on number six. Down she goes. A strike, and Norm's got a match. Strike Otherwise, down, baby. he's done. From couch. Everything going Jason's way right now. He's got the pin carry gods on his side. Trips the six late. He knows how big that is. Got to be tough here for Norm, who's been sitting on the bench <laughs> watching Jason Couch strike out. He needs a strike to match. Ten pin, and it's over. Another week 10, did in Norm Duke. Hey, boy, Norm. <laughs> you are the luckiest guy I've ever seen in my life. You're so lucky. The green ribbon, baby. I'll tell you what, you'd, you'd pull out a 52-pound bass out of Claremont. <laughs> the two neighbors from Florida finish up in incredibly exciting fashion. The Jason Couch wins the roll-off. A congratulatory kiss from his wife. Now he's got Parker Bowl the third to deal with next. I'm Parker Bone III from Jackson, New Jersey. Watch me bowl one game today to win it all. A day to remember for the great Pete Weber, paying tribute to his late father, Dick Weber, here in Fountain Valley, California. Has it ever been exciting? We had a roll off. Involving Jason Couch and Norm Duke. Couch survives to take on Parker Bowl the third, leading us to the Geico Championship recap. In match number one, it was Mike Machuga defeating Chris Lowshedder by the score of 236 to 154. And in match number two, Norm Duke defeated Mike Machuga by the score of 212 to 168. Match number three saw Jason Couch and Norm Duke tie 213 to 213 before Jason Couch wins it in a roll off 10 to 9. Norm leaves the flat 10. He's done for the day, setting up a great all lefty championship match for the Denny's PBA Tours Dick Weber Open. 
Well, I think the greens fees have got to be on Jason Couch next time he and Norm play golf in Claremont. Jason doesn't play golf. He plays flog. <laughs> it's golf backwards. Now it's the top C from Jackson, New Jersey. Another PBA Hall of Famer. Parker going the third. Parker. Top seed. Great start. Already nothing quite like the roll off. Our first since the U.S. Open. Speaking of New Jersey in North Brunswick last year, Mika Quiv and Emmy Patrick Allen won eventually by PA. Roll offs are fun to watch. They're exciting. Mm. I, you know, I think the one that everybody remembers is the Norm Duke Dave Traver one. That went three or four shots, and Traver struck out in the 10th frame to tie, and a lot of trash talking going on. It's real exciting. Like Late trip said. again. Like I said. <laughs> on number six, and Jason Couch is having a lot of fun with this, isn't he? Absolutely. Got a whole lot more. <laughs> How about this carry? Every opponent's nightmare and every bowler's dream right there. His 12th career title, Vernon Hills, Illinois, outside Chicago. Just a couple of months ago. Jason Couch, who is thinking about player of the year himself. Why not? Could be two titles if he wins today, leading us to the Ace Hardware matchup. And it's our first and only lefty-lefty matchup. Parker Bone was never lower than second throughout the entire tournament. Taking on his best friend, ex-roommate, Jason Couch. He has owned him on TV. Three or four title matches. Look out, light hit way off the mark. One, three, six, nine. Well, lost it off his hand and whiffed the head pin. Parker won his only major against Jason Couch, the Masters. Right now, you've got to wonder, is Dick Weber looking down on Jason Couch? A tremendous carry. Opponents whipping the head pin. Oh, Parker whipping the spare. That. Open frame early. Never got the head pin down. And just like that, he's down 24 pins. As Couch has started with a double. I mean, you know, this is just inexplicable. I mean, how do you, how do you Explain what Parker just did there after bowling as great as he has all week long and he gets up, misses the headpin, and whiffs the spare. He missed the headpin twice in one frame. There's a rebound on the other lane. Trying to snap a 20 event winless streak. Dating back to last season in El Paso, Texas, his last title. 30 career wins, fifth all time. Pete Weber has 32. Mark Roth, 34. Walter Williams Jr., 40. And late great Earl Anthony, of course, has 41. Walter Ray, by the way, came close last week. This week as well, had a good run at it, trying to make the show again. This moment belongs to two southpaws. Hmm. That wasn't the right move. Looked like he moved a little bit further in and got a little bit more hand, which is normal. I mean, the, the further in you move, the more you want to touch the holes with your fingers at the bottom of the swing, and there's no way to keep that ball on line for Jason Couch. 2, 4, 7, 10, Randy. How does he go about this one? He's got to get the ball over to the left side of the two. Drive the two into the ten. The ball will take out the four seven. Remember, in his match with Norm Duke, he was left with some challenging shots. And he responded. Meeting three in the tenth to force a roll off. He won that as well and comes up with a huge spare here. Yeah, it's really big because he avoids an open frame, but, but more importantly, he can now Instead of focusing on an open, now he can focus on what kind of move, what kind of adjustment he needs to make. Oh 
60 feet to success, Jason Couch. He's got a 28 pin lead. Ron Parker, ball the third. The Dick Weber Open final continues next. It's live coverage on ESPN of the Denny's PBA Tour. We pay tribute to the great Dick Weber, a PBA Charter member who won 26 titles, six on the senior PBA Tour, was the 1965 PBA Player of the Year. Dave and Randy, our entire crew with you. Watching an exciting final between Patrick uh, Parker Bone III and Jason Couch leading us to the Dexter approach. And it's all about Parker Bone III and his footwork. And his footwork is created by the initial push away. Gets the ball into the swing fairly early, which gets the feet moving. Watch that footwork, beautiful. But I think what makes Parker Bone III so great is that right there, this beautiful finish, shot after shot. It's on a strike, fourth frame, down by 20. And unlike Norm Duke, Parker Bone III doesn't have to change to a different colored shoe because he has the options of changing sliding soles. Not the ball rack he wanted out of the commercial break. No time to think about a shot. Tie pin numbers for Parker. He told us last night this was his tournament to win. Felt very confident. Takes care of the mark nicely. <laughs> and his wife Leslie expecting their third child. Valentine's Day, it's going to be a girl. No name picked out yet, we're told. For Parker. Well, the lane's not that tough. Well, he's making it look tough. He's talking about the right lane, but right there he gets a nice break. The love tap on the 10 pin to remain within 20. Right now, Jason Couch with a strike here can take a 30 pin lead. No re rack? Okay. <clears throat> ESPN's coverage of the PBA Tour rolls on. Coverage of the Phoenix Classic. The greatest bowlers in the world work the lanes. AMF, Chris Down Lanes. The value of the sun for a piece of the $232,000 prize. And a one-year tour exemption. That's next week, one Eastern from Phoenix. Yes! All 10 down for Jason Couch. Yeah, he made a ball changer, Dave. You can see just how, how much less, or how less aggressive that ball was as it was going down the lane. Again, it gets into that power zone, that swish half pocket zone for Jason Couch. It's a happy place for his ball to hit. Randy, how does Jason deal with the emotions of the roll off with Norm Duke and then regroup for a charge at Parker? It's all in the coconut, man. He put it behind you. You know, Jason's been here before. He knows the job at hand. And right now, you just think about making good shots. Come on, baby. Yes! Wow. Right now, Jason Couch really putting it to Parker Bone, the third, Dave. Again, good using ball two different change. balls. The ball changed on the right lane. And then this shot. Yes! He has caught fire. The turkey there. He frames four through six. Now Parker working on a strike. Six frame. Oh. Cuts the deficit to 30 with that hit. And in my opinion, even though it's, we're only through six frames, I feel that in order for Parker Bone to win this tournament, 
he must strike out from here on in. They'll put him in the 240s. They'll give him 246. Jason Couch right now going at 226. Top He's only seeds. missed once. That's what Parker is, Randy. 14 of 22 title matches since match play was put into the PBA Tour. Oh, oh, Gary! Yeah. Not the seven pin there for him. That's the hit that did in Norm Duke, and that's the hit that may inevitably do in Parker Bone the third. But you don't see Jason Couch leaving that week seven because of that high rev rate. There's his spare. The tournament coming almost exactly a year to the day since his last title. It was January 16th of 2005. A winner in El Paso, Texas. That lead may be insurmountable now. Couch looks very comfortable. Parker, of course, sporting the DW patch, as is Jason Couch, all of our bowlers, in honor of Dick Webber. Seventh frame for Jason. Yes! He's thinking the right thoughts. He's making the shots. He's making the adjustments. And when his ball hits the pocket, it's striking. 41 pin lead. This could all but lock it up for Jason Couch right here. That puts Jason Couch in the 240s. The best Parker Bone the third can shoot is 225. Jason needs a mark in either the ninth or tenth frame to win this championship. The lead balloons the 51 pins with a five bagger for Jason Couch. Big hill to climb. Parker Ball the third there. Our 10 down for him. In his 21st year on the PBA Tour. Oh. Of course, all the bowlers reflecting their feelings on the stepladder final. All five made it. They're very pleased to see PBA go old school this week. PBA.com fan poll overwhelmingly supporting this format. And Randy, you enjoy it too. I, I really do. And I really enjoy the stepladder finals. I like to see a guy, you know, start from the bottom, gain momentum, and kind of kind of go from the bottom to the top. He becomes the uh, crowd favorite. You know, the crowd gets behind him. Just nice, nice to watch that kind of momentum. Right now, Jason Couch looking for any mark here in the ninth frame with decent count, and he's going to win. Good shot. Good shot. Seven pins. Avoids a split. <clears throat> He's looking there for a six bagger. Again, a spare here, good count. First ball in the 10th frame is a winner. If he chops this, he'll need a mark in the 10th frame to win. Nicely done, stays clean. Seven pins, and he's a winner. For you, Dick Weber! Yes! He'll take nine instead. And the 2006 Dick Weber Open.
Pete appreciates every shot. Every pin knocked down today in tribute to his father. And for the 13th time. I win the Dick Weber Open. Absolutely. In his career, Jason Couch. PBA champion again. Win number two this year. Yeah, and you really start to have to add Jason Couch's name to that player of the year race. Thank you. Jason Hurd, his roommate, we saw Carmen Salvino, Ooh. great PBA champion, 17-time winner also. Can't believe I got lucky like Parker! Thank you! <laughs> and of course, awesome fun at this, the two lefties. There'll be others. Finish up a great week as the top seed. Just had to win the one match. With the man raising the trophy, Woo! the bride of Claremont, Florida. Jason Couch wins one for Dick Weber today. The Dick Weber Open on ESPN is brought to you by Dexter, where you can play with the pros. Enter to win at DexterShoe.com. By Bear, the more you know, the more you trust Bear. By Ace, the official hardware store of the PBA. Ace, the helpful place. And by Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. This year, let the tax experts at Jackson Hewitt help you get the biggest refund you deserve. Jason Couch wins his lucky 13th career title. He's joined now by a special guest, Ann Randy. And here to present the trophy to the winner of the inaugural Dick Weber Open is 32-time titleist Pete Weber. Yeah. Jason, on behalf of the entire Weber family, we want to present you with this Dick Weber Open trophy. Uh, you're, you, you were the only one to conquer that left lane or the right lane, so you deserved it. Congratulations. May you win many more. Thank you, Pete. Thanks. Uh, I just want to thank everybody here at Fountain Bowl and uh, the Dick Weber family. They are all first class. And Dick, you are with me today with all the luck on my side. I love you, man. I miss you. Congratulations, Jason. Dave? Truly the ambassador of bowling. Dick Weber and Jason Couch wins in his honor today. Don't forget Motel 6, Beanie Classic next week. Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern time. Live coverage on ESPN of the Denny's. PBA Tour rolls on for the Valley of the Sun. Congrats goes to Jason Couch today. Now for the entire crew, my partner Randy Peterson. It's Dave Ryan saying so long from Fountain Valley, California. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Jason Couch gets his 13th win with his wife, Kim, watching closely in incredibly dramatic fashion. History today, great to watch. World's strongest man coming up next here on ESPN. Man of the moment, Jason Couch.